Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Will of Hellfire, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Summer of 69. Diggity dank. Hello, and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News Teen Titans Edition. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is. I'm Kristen. And today we'll be covering Teen Titans. 19 through 22 from, of course, 1969. Because we're still in summer of 69. Well, this will be the last week for Nightwing News on in summer of 69. So That's right. We're wrapping it up. Even though I think next week we are recovering more Teen Titans issues. I know, but it's not 69. That's it's true. It's earlier in the 60s. It's like right before, yes. It's mad mod. I think it's like 63, 64. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll get you at the end, kids. But yeah, I think it's like set issue seven. And oh, seven. 67. Oh, the Titans didn't start till 64. Yeah. And then, this is so weird. They were not published consistently. Mm-mm. A lot of the DC books, because like I know me and Lilith and Will have been going through these. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Justice League, Green Lantern, even Batman didn't get, I don't think, I don't think got 12 issues in 1969. Batman. Modern comics would never. Modern DC would never. Well, for a while, when they first, like, back in the 40s, I have all those. When they first started the Batman comic, it was quarterly because there oh, were yeah. four stories in it. Well, that's like there in 69, there wasn't even 12 issues. And then, like, me and Loth were going through them. At least two of the issues were, like, reprints. Like, the one, like one or two were oversized, and they were just like, oh, here's a bunch of reprints, you know, because they had, like, Barbara's first appearance as Batgirl went in and maybe they were going through some hard times and didn't have any money. But I mean, at least they, at least I was like, I keep saying, I'm like, at least they like tried to put something out, even if it was just a bunch of reprints these days, they're like, if it's late, okay, it's late. You're not getting a book this month. Yeah. And they charge us way more for it too. Exactly. I know. I know. That's like me and Lil for reading some Spider-Mans from that year. And we're just like, First, it was 12 cents, then it jumped to 15 cents. We're like, oh, wish. The other thing is, this whole story is done. Like, I read it and I feel satisfied. I think that's the other thing is that when we go, and which I mean, I like it, but when we, even with the new Teen Titans, it felt like more happened in mm. the comics. And so when you're done reading, it, you're like, yeah. <laughs> you feel like you read something. Yeah. As opposed to, I mean, you know, I'm enjoying the modern comics, but yeah, you can definitely tell that they're writing them differently. And sometimes, you know, I'm really liking, you know, Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo's Nightwing, but sometimes I read it and I think, okay, that was good, but I don't feel satisfied. I want more because... It's just like reading a chat. And these are more like reading a short story. You know, you know, it's part of something bigger, but it's all wrapped up. Whereas very much in modern comics, you usually feel like you're reading a chapter and you want to immediately go to the next chapter and you can't. Oh yeah. It's it's especially DC in this era. If I've learned anything this month, it's like, yeah, they pretty much, they tie most of their stuff up in one issue. So. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it was the 80s when they started to not. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I think I they know. started. But to I feel it. like even with some of the new Teen Titans, it's a little bit different in that a lot of times they're wrapping stuff up in the issue, but there's something in the beginning, but there's something that extends the whole thing. But now, now it's like people don't write to finish the issue and have the thing extended. It's like, yeah, we're just worried about that extended thing. So this is just moving oh, yeah. the plot forward. There's not a, it's like a cliffhanger ending or whatever. 
well today i mean these days they write for the trades because everything gets collected yeah back you know in the 80s and even in the 90s they weren't collecting every single story arc but yeah now they do like i said so I would... in, new, in new news i guess we have to cover quickly yes uh it was announced today oh <laughs> hold on yes kids breaking breaking nightwing news Yes, it was announced Nightwing will appear in Harley Quinn season three. He was even in the, in the trailer that they released today. I'm excited. I actually haven't watched the first two seasons of Harley Quinn because I keep forgetting about it. But I figure I can just jump on with the third season. I mean, I, it's, it's like I know who Harley and Ivy are. I know who the villains are. Like, I don't. I mean, I, I'm guessing there's not a lot of deep backstory that I'm going to be confused about. Yes. Am I, is there anything I need to know, Phil? <laughs> No, you could probably jump in. I mean, just just spoilers. Don't watch it with children in the room. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I, I get that. Well, I did go and read um, the the comic that's supposed to be in between seasons. Oh, two yeah, and yeah. Three. Did you read it? I read the first issue. I, I'm going to go back and read the rest of them. But okay, I well, you have to. Whatever. There's only one issue that Nightwing appears in. Um, I think it might be the third or fourth issue, but it's really ridiculous it's really ridiculous i mean i feel like it's definitely in keeping with it but it's that every time he pops up they keep talking about his butt <laughs> like he's working out at the gym and bruce calls him and that's him putting his his costume on and he's in front of a mirror so we get to see his. <laughs> did you watch the trailer today the trailer they put out yeah, i did why are you doing the voice <laughs> i'm just the right amount of serious <laughs> I thought that that was pretty good. But uh, yeah, it's good. Like I say, yeah, just the amount, the, the the language level, and everything. Yeah, you just don't want children, small children, watching this. Right. Yeah, when he goes to meet Harley and Ivy, she's like, "Hey, night butt." Oh. And then when she goes to leave, she's like, "Thanks, Tushwing." <laughs> So, yeah, I read it. It's pretty. It's pretty goofy. Although you have time, maybe you should go back and watch the first two seasons. All I'll say is, <clears throat> Kite Man. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's only like half hour shows, right? And I'm sure yeah, it's much yeah. more than Young Justice. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, I I was pleased actually reading the comic and um. And the trailer because I was afraid. I was afraid that it would be like, I don't know, that they would do, that they would pull a like Batman and Harley Quinn and it would be adult like that, something sexual with Nightwing. And they didn't because Harley seems to be in a reasonably committed relationship um, with Ivy. And instead it was, it was not. And it sounds, and it sounds like there's going to be some making fun of Batman and how serious the bats are since he's doing a voice. <laughs> oh yeah. It, there's all kinds of uh, funny there. She, she, you know, Harley Quinn's like, Oh, I hear the, the rumors about Batman. He F's bats. He's like, no. <laughs> Did she say that to him? <laughs> <laughs> well, and the Robin is Damien, right? Oh yes, that is a funny episode. You have to watch it, yeah, because Damien, like, he comes after Harley because he's like he wants his own nemesis, so he chooses Harley. So he just starts coming after Harley. So that's season two, right? I think so. Yeah, he's like, "Fight me, woman!" <laughs> <laughs> and was Barbara in season one or just in season two? Uh season two, season two. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see what I can do. Because she's in college. Yeah. But yes, and it sounds like Jim Gordon is kind of off the rails. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like in all the seasons, that's not a new thing. No, no, you know, it's like okay. he's burnt, burnt out. He's like, "We get you, clown." <laughs> oh yeah, you, you discovered today it's Christopher Maloney. So yeah, yeah, which really cracks me up because I was like, "Oh my god, it's like Commissioner Gordon has become Elliot Stabler." <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Right before he got kicked off the force. <laughs> so yeah, yes, now I'll probably try to watch it because it does sound kind of funny. 
there's all kinds of crazy stuff like the wonder woman villain dr psycho they're like he's he starts hanging out with harley and her crew because he gets kicked off the legion of doom because he, they're like even we won't have a member who uses the c word did they even use the c word they didn't say the c word i think they that's the one thing they did believe but they, they just and they literally say the c word yeah it's like all the other words that we use, but yeah, they don't use that word. That's very American, though. Yes, yes. Because Americans were like, that's a really bad one. And like British and Australians and stuff, man, they say it all the time. I, know, I was going to say, I wonder if they don't bleep it in uh, Britain, yeah. I don't know. Do they show it in Australia? We can ask Ray. Tell him which episode to watch and ask him if they say it. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I think they think they have DC. Well, it's HBO Max. Or yeah, it's or... Max. You know what? If they, if it's not on each, if they don't make me a Max, I'm sure that it's probably they probably show it on something. I should ask him. I don't know if he's watched it though. Tell me, inquiring minds want to know. We need to there's know. Not a lot of Bat, there's not a lot of Batman, right? Don't worry. <laughs> Still, which episode to watch? <laughs> That's true. All right. So now we'll go from edgy to square. <laughs> All right, that's right. Yes, kids, because with the 1969 issues of Teen Titans, uh, it starts with Teen Titans number 19 from February 1969. Stepping this, stones for a giant killer. This one is selling for 12 cents. Mm -hmm. seems, to be, seems to be, but that, that seemed to be the standard in 19, uh, February 1969. I wonder what that would be. Oh. <laughs> Uh, writer Mike Friedrich, uh, penciler Gil Kane, inker Wally Wood, letterer Milt Snappin, and editor Dick Giordano. Uh, all right, so here's a synopsis the plan to defeat, uh, his plan to defeat the Justice League, mocked by Headmaster Mind, who did show up in an issue of Justice League this year in 1969. So an old JLA foe, Punch, a teenage would-be supervillain, vows to prove himself by destroying the Teen Titans first. Speedy rejoins the Titans, and he and Wonder Girl are captured by Punch when they investigate racial riots of a New England high school. At, uh, hold on. That's my place. Uh, at the same time, Robin, Kid Flash, and Aqualad are defeated by high-frequency sound and light devices while on a mission for to a Midwestern community. Reun reunited as Punch's prisoners, the Titans use teamwork to escape his traps and overcome the youthful villain and his followers. Afterward, Aqualad returns to Atlantis for an extended leave, ostensibly in order to look after the infant Aqua Baby while Aquaman is involved in a quest for his missing wife, Mira, and Speedy becomes Aqualad's replacement among the Titans. So yeah, that's that's the last we see of Aqua Aqua Aqualad in these issues. <laughs> yeah, for a while. Oh yeah. Okay. According to I was sorry, I was only half listening because I was trying to find a currency converter. According to one I found, twelve cents in nineteen sixty nine had the same buying power as ninety three cents now. So we are getting ripped off. <laughs> yeah, but but again, it's like it, they, they do higher quality paper and stuff, and like me and little folks, <laughs> I. I I hope like if that extra money's going to like pay like the people who make the comic, you know, the writers, the artists, and stuff. Oh, I forgot to show you. Do you see on my uh, door up there? I have, <laughs> I have bat. Do you see that thing in the corner? It's Batman and Robin climbing up a bat rope. Nice. <laughs> I bought my dad this giant Father's Day card that had them climbing up, and I was like, Dad, when you're done that that card, I want it back so I can get them back. <laughs> Read it and hand it back to me, please. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to say is how old does this guy look? I mean, he's supposed to be young because he keeps getting like, oh, we're not going to work with you. You're so young. He looks like he's like a middle-aged 40-year-old dad. <laughs> I know. He. I know. Yeah, he, he doesn't look he doesn't look like a teenager like they're at, like the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> He must be one that goes uh, prematurely bald or something. Or unless it's just the art. I, I don't know. That hairline is back here, man. No. Nah. I mean, and okay, yeah, he's wearing a suit, but 
It's the hair. It's the hair. <laughs> But yeah, I'm. It's, uh, I mean, I want. I wonder if they. Uh, it's so weird because I, I, I'm guessing because of the Aquaman stuff. They that's why Aqualad's getting written out. But I was just. It's so weird because Denny Denny O'Neill's writing Justice League at this point, and he <laughs> basically he, you know, all the other members kind of come and go in his run, but he really doesn't have Aquaman in his issue. <laughs> so it's weird. So it's like Aquaman's not in the league at the moment. They just wrote Aqualad out of the Titans. Yeah, so, yeah. And I'm not sure why. Because that's always kind of one of the weird things is it's sort of, I mean, in modern stuff, they kind of try to, you know, like with Teen Titans Year One, they have it be the, the Fab Five. But, you know, originally it was just four and it wasn't. Yeah. Well, again, and they're always like slaves to you know, whatever's going on in everyone's own, their own books because, like, this is the era. Denny also is writing Wonder Woman, and that's the one where he takes away Wonder Woman's powers, and she's basically like a ninja in that white suit. So, the first Justice League we read for the summer of '69 is basically Wonder Woman turning into resignation. So, all right. So yes, they get they get letters. Well, of course, Speedy shows up, me and all. Hey, you need me to solve anything for you? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with Wonder Chick, see? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it's like, okay, we have to break up into two groups. Boom, already the teams are made. So then we see... This poor Jewish guy getting beaten up. Oh, yeah. That's who Speedy and Wonder Girl save. But it turns out it was a trip. But that, yeah, he, he captures all the Titans. Punch captures all the Titans. But his one mistake is like leaving their weapons right at their feet as they're even though they're tied up. <laughs> Uh, his rookie. I know that Robin like holds uh, Speedy's uh, bow with his feet, and then Speedy pulls the uh, bowstring with his teeth. <laughs> yeah. Also, his other mistake was that outfit. I mean, I know he's trying to be like Pudgy Judy from the plays, but no, <laughs> he should have stayed with the suit. <laughs> I mean, unless we're we trying to do like, uh, you know, get were we trying to give Dick his own Joker, maybe? I don't know. It just it's not working out. It just yeah, I know. Suits like that are always a no. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're split. They're teenagers and stuff. But I'm like, really? I'm like, this guy's gonna give a hard time. I mean, you have Donna on the team. You have Wally who has super speed. I mean, really, this guy's gonna give you guys a hard time. The whole team. Maybe they're just trying to make him feel good. They're trying to build his self-esteem up a little bit before they punch his lights out. Yeah. Because it, it seems like they are always, like, looking for an excuse to, you know, like, kind of bolster Dick and Roy because it's like, you know, Wally's either, oh, my leg hurts, or, oh, I'm dizzy, or, you know. Yeah. Which I thought he had super healing, but apparently they're not emphasizing that as much. I think, though, part of it is just supposed to be... And I do kind of like this. I think, isn't there something that Superman says once in one of the many comics we've read that, because, um, you know, Batman's big thing is always has to be prepared for everything. So that means he's always suspicious. And Superman is kind of, you know, I'd rather trust people. And if it turns yeah. out I'm proven wrong, like, I'd rather be proven wrong a few times than, um, than not trust people. And I suppose, you know, of course, you are you could retort, oh, well, you're bulletproof, you know, so you could do that um, kind of thing. But I feel like that's very much what the Teen Titans do, is they're yes. very trusting um, of people. So it's super easy for someone to trap them because basically all this bunch of be like, hey, a teenager needs help. Can you come help him? They're like, yeah, of course. They come and help. And then it's like, ha we tricked you. And they're like, oh, no. Yeah, they're supposed to be more <laughs> trusting, too, because they are teenagers. I mean, I think in this era, even Batman is more trusting than it becomes later on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, yeah, most of the uh, 
Batman issues in 1969. They were kind of almost like, almost like rejected 1966 TV show scripts. Almost, yeah, because there's even one issue where Batman, you know, Bat, the prize at, at a beauty contest was like a night out on the town with Batman. So it's like <laughs> that is super the television show. Yeah. <laughs> a night without <in> West. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, I think he also just kind of wants to, Punch just kind of wants to be a jerk because he's like, I'm uh, taunting you by holding Aqualad up over a vat of water. Man, rude. I mean, that's basically how they free themselves. Yeah, they shoot the arrow and uh, freeze Aqualad and then, yeah, they wrap up this whole thing. Then Aqualad's like, man, I got to split. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Sometimes the confidence of a rookie villain that yeah, he does just, just totally leaves Speedy stuff lame right there. <laughs> I, I don't know if some writers just don't want to deal with like you know Aqu Aqualad. You know, he, <laughs> this issue where he's drinking the glass of water. He's like, hold on, I got that. You know, I got to touch water every hour, so he's like drinking a glass of water. Yeah, but it does help you know that this is actually wrapping up very quickly because he drank his glass of water and he's suspended over there and they get him in and it's like, okay, so it's only been an hour. <laughs> uh, should we do Swing the next starfish? <laughs> oh, I did think it was hilarious how... Uh, Robin and Speedy play rock, paper, scissors for who gets to punch. <laughs> who gets to punch, punch. Yep, and Dick and wins. Then you notice Robin takes his glasses off and punches I know, him. I saw that. He's holding the dude's glasses out before he hits them. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, and then... And then Speedy's all, oh, I'm going to come back for my date with Wonder Chick. Ah, oh, go break a bow string. Like, ah. <laughs> so ridiculous. All right, you want to do the next one? Yes, I got to flip through. They have a Hawk and Dove one in there. Reminding me of how annoying I find the original Hawk and Dove. Yeah. All right, I'll, well, I'll read the synopsis while you find that. Uh, okay, teen, I got it. Teen Titans, number volume one, number twenty, April, April. So we jumped. So we yeah, we skipped March. We went from February to April, nineteen sixty nine. Titans fit the Battle of Jericho. Writers, three writers: Neil Adams, Len Wein, and Marv Wolfman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, pencilers, also Neil Adams and Nick Cardi. Uh, Inker Nick Hardy and letterer Ben Oda. I mean, these are um, these are really famous people. Um, oh yeah, like they're kind of. I mean, people kind of give the original Teen Titans crap, but uh, but yeah. So Marv's at least a little bit involved already in Titans. Yeah, I mean, this is like eleven years before uh, New Teen okay, Titans. Okay, yeah, right? I just went and look. So Marv is a bit older than George. Oh, yeah, yeah. George was born in 54. Marv was born in 46. Oh, okay. Because so I was like, I was kind of surprised when I read it. I was like, really? Marv's on there? Yeah, I was going to say, say George, yeah, it wasn't too much longer until George. I think George started in this. Yeah, a lot of these guys yeah. have started really young anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, the very first one, wasn't it like Jerry Robinson was like <laughs> barely out of high school? I mean, he might have still been in high school. A lot of them, yeah. They started. They were like, eh, whatever. Well, it's like Jerry. Well, I mean, back then you still had like the newsboy on the corner and stuff. The shoe shot boy that Dick so often doubles as when he needs info. Well, that's like when we talked to Jerry Conway, who created Jason Todd. It's like, I think he started at like 16. I was like, real what? Dang. Can you imagine? That's wild. Uh, all right. So Titans fit the Battle of Jericho. A mysterious costume crime fighter called Joshua invades Titan's lair and enlists the Teen Titans aid in stopping a confrontation between police and teenage protesters. All involved are unaware that the protesters are being backed by organized crime figures who in turn are pawns of the alien invaders from Dimension X. Yeah. The, titan 
The Titans, together with Joshua and his brother, the leader of the protesters, halt the alien scheme to release the Muriel being a monstrous giant creature on Earth, but both the aliens and their criminal underlings continue to plot the team's downfall. There was a, there's a lot going on in this one. <laughs> I know. Because it seems like they're just like handling a street gang and all of a sudden uh, something like giant thing almost looks like a that giant. Was aliens! <laughs> I was like, wait, it's like they threw everything in there. I mean, it, it kind of works, but I feel like it might have been better if it was just one thing or the other. I, I mean, well, I, I've seen stories like this before where they've tried to lump two things together, and I don't know, it just seemed a little clunky here. It's like, oh, it's like street gang, street gang, street gang. Oh, wait, aliens. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like, um, I feel like the idea that the street kids were being manipulated by adults like that makes sense that would be a good one yeah um but uh which is kind of which is kind of what happened over in robin in, in the 1969 one the students were being manipulated by older protesters older fake oh, protesters. Yeah. but yes okay the but, stuff that they're like trying to be cool how they tell us What's this? Another iron in the fire? It's a shame we have to turn to the next page to see what's really happening, baby. <laughs> like, oh my God, are you for real? <laughs> and I know the theme of the story with the title and everything, but it's like, oh, this costume figure, Joshua. I'm like, wait, Joshua, what kind of name was that for like a costume guy? But I'm like, oh, I guess it's better than Drake. But yes, like you said, it has to fit with Jericho, but yeah. yes. But yeah, 1969, it seemed like a lot of the titles were like, a lot of the uh, threats were like either like gangs or protesters or crime bosses. You know, okay. like, it's very with the, it's very with the times. Like a like a Batman, a lot of guys named Biggie. You know, crime bosses named Biggie or stuff like that. Yeah. Well, is it the seventies when they get the Falcons and the Maronis? Mm. I mean, maybe they were around before, but they'd make them bigger. Probably. I can't remember if they did anything with them before, but yeah, I don't think they really got big until like long Halloween and stuff. At least the Falcons, yeah. Okay. I know they did more mob stuff in the 70s. Because remember, uh, <laughs> uh, wait, Maroon. No, no, no. I was going to say, no, that's Zuka who gets shot in year, Batman year three. <laughs> never mind. And I no, think Maroon. Zuko is with the Maronis. Yeah, Mar the Maron Maroni's mostly known for is the guy who throws the acid in Harvey Dent's face. All right, yeah, they've been around longer. That's right. Um, well, I did appreciate that the protesters are using squirt guns, um, but I definitely understand Robin's point um, that that's not a good idea um, because the police are going to think they're real guns. And... I feel like you can tell that these kids are white, that they're like, I'm going to take a squirt gun to a protest and it'll be okay. And like, and this really, I mean, I don't know if people would have thought like that in the, in 69, but now that it's 2022, I was like, oh my God, you guys cannot take squirt guns that look like real guns to a protest. You are going to get shot. What are you thinking, you idiots? <laughs> oh yeah. That, that, that's why they, 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 when they make all kinds of, you know, all the toy guns and squirt guns now, you know, they make sure they look, don't look like, like guns, hot you know, paint or whatever. Yeah. Different colors. They put like that orange thing on the tip of the barrel and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so all right, but the protesters like you're trying to throw a bunch of stuffed shirts, which a little bit. <laughs> These squares, man. <laughs> uh, but then we yeah, see. Like like I said, the giant creature just seems to appear out of, like, nowhere. Yeah, yeah. It was going pretty well. Like, okay, there's this guy back in Europe. We need to – he's playing chess. We need to get rid of the Teen Titans. You know, it seems like it's probably some sort of uh, nefarious real estate thing. We want to we want to knock down some old stuff so we can gentrify uh, kind of thing. And then, yeah, it <laughs> turns out it's really aliens. <laughs> 
I wonder too if that's just because we had three writers too. They let each one add something in. <laughs> Maybe it's like okay, I want the first. Yeah. Okay, so I want this kid named Joshua. Great, and then the next one's like, I want it to be real estate developers that are nefarious. Okay, great, and I want aliens. Okay, throw it in. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I could that especially this area. I could definitely see that. Uh, Go ahead, throw it in. <laughs> because I mean, like it kind of works since it turns out the aliens were tricking the gentrifiers um, into. They thought that they were just gonna. Oh, we'll just put this paint, and it'll explode the stuff that we want to uh, that we want to develop. But it being, turns out it's really alien juices or whatever is super weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh and my it looks God. like a giant jello mold. Yeah, they even call it out, it looks like jello. No. Oh my God. But but that, oh my god! But that scene in the beginning where Josh was like, "Follow me," and they're like, "Oh, our copter's broken," and you know, Wally has to take them all, not only run in a straight line, but spin in a circle to like create an updraft to keep everyone afloat and stuff. Yeah, poor Wally. I know. Also, also the older brother. I think he's supposed to be in his twenties. He again looks like a dad. Yeah, exactly. That's supposed to be his little brother. I'm like, that looks like his son. His hair to the side. Yeah. Fat cat's gang. It's like, you won't need an electronically charged super suit again. A lot. You're like, got a lot on the ball for a square. <laughs> yes. And then the aliens are like, Argh. we'll get those. <laughs> Don't work for those meddling Teen Titans. <laughs> We're gonna get him. Yeah, some crazy stuff. <laughs> so, do you want to get so, to the next? Like, yeah, I mean, I guess good job bringing it back around, but also it was weird. We're not done with those <laughs> aliens yet. All right, should we get to the next one with your favorite hawk and dove? Uh, yes. Although, can I tell you that at the end of Hawk and Dove, so in this, there's the Hawk and Dove, I'm reading it from the Omnibus, there's the Hawk and Dove one, and so they bust through this, and the Teen Titans are at the end, and it says, hey, isn't that the sweet Teen Titans? And the next line is, you bet your sweet Bippy it is. <laughs> <sighs> Amazing. <All> right. So, <laughs> yes. Teen Titans number 21. Again, we skip a month. So June 1969. Citadel of Fear. Writer and penciler Neil Adams. Uh, Inker Nick Cardi. Letterers John Costanza and Joe Letteris. Uh, and, and editor Dick Giordano. On the yeah, trail. It's big, it's big names. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is that John Costanza on the uh, on the, on the letter. I'm like, so I, I, well, I'll see his name on like '90s comics, so he must have been in the business for a while. I guess I'll, we can do I'll it. Right do it. Him. John Costanza uh, is he George's brother? No, oh, uh, we always make that joke. Yeah. Hey, boy. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, that's how I usually read. I go George or John Costanza. <laughs> Uh, bah, bah, bah. So on the trail of of the criminals from the previous issue, the Titans run afoul of Hawk and Dove, who are after the same gang for different reasons. After a brief brief altercation, Wonder Girl accompanies Hawk and Dove through a teleportation device to a gang hideout in Istanbul, while Robin, Kid Flash, and Speedy battle another segment of the organization in Berlin. Both teams are defeated and captured, but Hawk, Dove, and Wonder Girl escape in time to rescue Speedy from being crushed beneath a gigantic machine. 
Hawk and Dove, sensing their mystic transformation back in the Hawk, Hank and, da and Dawn Hall about to occur, are forced to abandon the case, leaving Speedy and Wonder Girl to search for Robin and Kid Flash, who are still prisoners of the Dimension X aliens. Yeah, John Constanza was born in 1943. So, uh, right yes, yeah. Uh, all right, so yes, I guess they haven't really. Oh no, they've just heard about Hawking Dove because we see Robin Hawking Dove, they're wanted by the police. Yes, yeah, so this will be their first encounter with them. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it, that seems like another plot device, too, in 1969. Cause they were, again, in one of the issues at Justice League, Batman's like, oh, I just ran into the Creeper. We should investigate the Creeper more. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? I don't know. We should go investigate. But, yeah, this this was weird because it's like, it, seemed, it was a little over the top here, but I think, yeah, this era of Hawk and Dove, they're brothers, and you know, one's you know, Dove's the pacifist, and Hawk's the more aggressive one, of course. So. Which I don't mind that, and them being brothers, but uh, Hawk is so annoying. I know that's um, okay. I think, and I think honestly, it's, Dove is a little bit annoying. It's yeah, it's just over the too. it's just over the top, showing trying to show, oh, look how aggressive Hawk is, and you know, oh, Dove loses his head more, yeah. Also, and I've read their the ones that are in here, and their dad is annoying too. Their dad is like a judge, whatever the last name is, and he's totally like, uh, such an annoying guy. I was reading it and I was like, God, I feel bad for their mom. If I was their mom, I think I'd leave them all to <laughs> just move out. Because they're all such dicks. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I never read a ton of uh, Hawk and Dove in this era, because yeah, because you know, Dawn gets killed in crisis, and then we bring in a female dove after crisis. So, yeah, works fine. But, uh, like I said, I've only read it because they're in this Teen Titans yeah. Silver Omnibus. And so, I was like, uh, these guys are annoying. They wanted to give them a gimmick, but yeah, the, I love their mystic transformation runs out. So, they just like run. Yeah. Yeah, funny. And of course, because it's the, it's the sixties and they still haven't got with women's lib. Um Hawk is like, Oh what stops the fighting? Oh we're a oh, crate is almost gonna fall on beautiful Wonder Girl. Gotcha, yeah. beautiful. She's like, ah, oh, thanks. And then Speedy's like, put Wonder Girl down. <laughs> like, oh brother. I know, yeah, it's like, oh, hey, she's mine. No, she's mine. <laughs> but it should be like, Ooh, shut guys. up. Shut up. She can make up her own mind. Uh, and they're like, okay, we'll have to split into two groups. And since he's still holding Wonder Girl, who he still keeps calling beautiful, I suppose by her name, boom, it's hawked up in Wonder Girl in a group. And Spiggy I Robin and... Kid Flash and the other. I guess if you're not going to use her name, is beautiful better than Wonder Chick? Yes. But still ridiculous. But yeah, see, <laughs> oh yeah, Dove's the pacifist. We could have gone by them without wiping them out, Barbarian. <laughs> Wait, you're belly aching. <laughs> That's funny, though. <laughs> I know. Uh, so then we see uh, we see in Berlin a real cause for belly aching. Oh, the uh -huh. uh, these are the people from the last time, right? The fat cat. I think so. Yeah. The fat cat. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the one I, again. It's hard for me to remember which was which until I'm looking back at these guys. I read them all at once, so it's like. Uh, yeah. This is the one where Wally's leg hurts. Yep, yep. And so the Hawk and Dove and Wonder Girl, they get gassed. Mm 
The others, the boys are uh, about to get run over by a train with people shooting at them. Then there's a giant, giant, giant robot spider. You know, did, they had to have done this on purpose. Dig that crazy, whacked out spider, comma, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, where was that one? It's like the, uh, not the last page, the one before it, yeah. Oh, yeah, you really went through them. Um, oh, yes, yes. Holy cockroaches. Holy crippled cockroaches. Yes. Our own means of destruction. But I would just like to say, that is such... I didn't really... It's fascinating to me. Well, the the one at the end where Robin gets caught, that's... That's like such a... That's such a new Teen Titans pose. It's really interesting to me. Because um, like I was kind of pointing it out last time. Um, to see... How DC is, I don't know, DC is always, with Dick's Robin, I mean, even as a kid, you know, with the boy hostage and this kind of stuff, it's kind of wild how they've always kind of been putting him in these, in these positions that are often stereotypically in other comics uh. and the female characters. I didn't even notice that before. Yeah, when Dick gets captured, it get, like shoots out that tentacle or whatever. I guess it's supposed to be its web. It makes a thwip. That's the sound Spider-Man's web co makes coming out of the web shooter. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, they, yeah, they're definitely calling out Spider-Man. Who is, a, who is in college at the moment in 1969? So. Uh, well, so the, fir the, fir the first issue we covered in 1969, there was a riot on campus, so. Oh, that's the same year that Dick went to college. I wonder. Uh, if I wonder if Robin went to college because Spider Man was going to college. Maybe I don't know. Because <laughs> it's like, why did you decide after twenty nine years that like now he was going to college? <laughs> I mean, maybe it was just the the conversation. It's like you know what we've had him be. You know, it's been th almost thirty years, and he's still like you know the kid. You know? But anyway, I thought that that was a very uh, new Teen Titans pose where he gets thwipped, um, as you would say. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't the last page. Yeah, they, they when they... The, the last part of theirs. Then we get to chapter three. And of course, like, who are these idiots that... Um, Dove's like, oh, these handcuffs are made of fibrous plastic and they stretch. Who makes handcuffs of stretchy plastic? That's that's a terrible move. I know. Once again, overplay over, you know, just going overboard with the whole, hey, if you stop and thought for a moment instead of just punching stuff. And then these pla these handcuffs are not only stretchy, they're also combustible. Who made these handcuffs? <laughs> again, it's 1969. Everything was flammable. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's true, but it's like I specifically made these handcuffs to put them on people to test that they were then smart enough to get out of them, <laughs> not to actually hold them. But anyway, they bust in and they're at the mechanical spider, crushes down on Speedy. But there's just enough room for Hawk and Dove to get under there and help do push-ups to get it up. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what's that thing on Roy for a, at least a couple seconds? I'm like, wouldn't that like, I don't know, crush his back or something? I mean, it's a pretty big spider. Yeah. And then, of course, Hawk is like, oh, okay, we gotta check two, uh, we gotta check two hallways. I'll take Wonder Girl down this one. Speedy. Wonder Chick goes with me. Uh, guys, guys, guys. Oh my god, both Roy and Donna are just like, we gotta find Robin and Flasher. <laughs> yep. Donna's like, you need to listen to teamwork. 
Oh, in Boston, and no, it's Fat Cat. Yep. And here we go, back with our aliens in another dimension. Yeah, because like, Fat Cat. <laughs> yeah, Fat Cat's like been hypnotized to obey them. Yeah, he's like, here, oh. here. They're like here, just blow up the installation. Yeah, blow up your face with everyone in it. Yep. Like your lives are a small price to pay. Fat Cat's like, okay, I'm gonna do it. Under some sort of selective hypnosis. And then they're like, oh, we just found out about the smuggling operation. Case closed. So, like, the instant their case is closed, <laughs> their outfits start to go away. So they're like, ah. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. And Roy's like, oh, it's my fault. I drove him off. <laughs> Find Robin and Kid Flash ourselves. Oh no! Yeah, so this one's uh ends on a cliffhanger. I know it's a two-parter. What? It's so funny. We like, yeah, we don't want the guest stars for the next issue too. So yeah, let's turn off their powers and then run off. Exactly. Also, oh, check it out. The next one has gone up to fifteen cents. Yep. Yep. But they did that at Marvel too at some point in 1969. Yeah, I went from twelve to fifteen. So. Let's see. 15 cents. I'll let it calculate and I'll let you know what it is. It's going to be like a. Oh, 15 cents is $1.16. Ooh. I'd I'd still kill for that price. (laughs) I mean, come on. All All right. So there is there another. Synopsis, or was the synopsis you gave for both of them last time? Uh, no, 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 no. There should be one more. Let's see. Oh, come on. There we go. Teen Titans number 22, August 1969. Halfway to Holocaust. Uh, writer Neil Adams, this time penciler Nick Cardi, anchor Nick Cardi, letterer John Costanza again, and editor Dick Giordano again. Oh, and remember, we also get a backup story in this issue The Origin of Wonder Girl. <laughs> Which that must kind of tie in with what you said is going on with Wonder yeah. Woman. Yeah. Well, I think they uh, they just wanted to think it's like, hey, how does Dawn still have powers and when Wonder Woman's powerless and the Amazons have like left this dimension? But that one was written by Marv Wolfman. Uh, yeah, Pencil Gil Kane and Nick Cardi, Gaspar Saladino, letterer, and yep, the Giordano editor. All right, so. All right, here's the synopsis for Halfway to Holocaust. While Speedy and Wonder Girl battle an extra-dimensional creature that suddenly appears in the criminal's control room, Robin and Kid Flash, under the control of the aliens, are used to discover a third dimension, which would uh, dimension world invisible to the Dimension X dwellers, which exists adjacent to both their their world and Earth. Escaping, they rejoin their teammates in the adjoining dimension, only to be pursued by the aliens. Uh, the battle between Titans and aliens is, is uh, cut short when a community a community intelligence being, the sole sentient native of the newly discovered dimension, takes on the form of a giant archer in imitation of Speedy and drives the minions of Dimension X back to their own world, promising that never again will beings from Dimension X use his world as a gateway to Earth. The archer allows the Titans to depart in peace. Yeah, that about sums it all up. <laughs> so I wonder, is that the last we see of those aliens? It's just like, yeah, they're, they're not going to get through here. Uh, Maybe. I didn't keep reading, so I can't be sure. But uh, I think it might be oh, because... Um, look, I'm, I was, I, there's a link I'm looking out. Oh, their first appearance was Wonder Woman 100. From August 1958. So they weren't just Titans, uh, the ones, I guess. Appearances of Dimension X. Uh, 
Oh, they don't have them in order, but yeah, they were in Wonder Woman 100, Justice League of America. Wait, just all right, Justice League Adventures number 29. What? Oh, no, they must come back sooner or later because they show up in Booster Gold 21 and 22. So it's probably the 80s series, so that I'm thinking they're so maybe they chill out till the 80s. Yep, 1987. Yeah, I'm not. By our buddy Dan Jurgen. And the next one, oh yeah. That's why I didn't pick the next one because it involves uh, the rock and roll, which is fine, but then they also go down to South America. And it's just not good. Yeah, no, four is good. Four is just yeah, not good. <laughs> um, yes, and then Skis of Death. Yeah, the last two from 1969 are human centered. And they have potential, and then in both of them, they interact with Native Americans of South America and North America. And I was like, nope, 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 nope. These are these are not good, not good. No. Oh yeah, and that backup story. This is when Donna gets her uh, red costume for the first time. Yeah, um, which is good. I uh, I like that one a lot. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't really have too much to say about they finally beat the aliens. But with yeah. the help of the pink alien to help them defeat the green aliens. Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah. Beings from Dimension X will not help you. Peace. And Robin. Peace, baby! <laughs> ah, so 60s. So Just like he's not saying holy hi ho holy dimensional hijinks. That's a pretty good one though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the first time we get info about Wonder Girl. Her this is the first time we get an official backstory. I guess, unless they did something in Wonder Woman. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with this era, but yeah, I think she just like popped up in well, because the very first Teen Titan outing yeah. was just the three with Kid Flash, Aqualad, and Robin. Yeah. Again, I think this the whole point of this story was, you know, Wonder Woman's lost her powers. The Amazons have left this dimension. So it's like, oh, how does Donna still have power, you know? Well, she's starting to lose it, we see. Well, she has fainting spells. Right. <sighs> Uh, oh, wait, here. Uh, upon the Titans' return to Earth, Wonder Girl unexpectedly collapses, the result of a recently reoccurring series of fainting spells. In explanation, she tells the other Titans her origin for the first time. So maybe they discovered for the first time. As a child, she has been saved from an apartment building fired by Wonder Woman and taken by her to Paradise Island to live after all attempts to ascertain her identity or those of her parents, presumed to be the couple killed in the blaze, had failed. Before Queen Hippolyta's foster daughter, oh wait, oh wait, becoming Queen Hippolyta's foster daughter and Wonder Woman's foster sister, she was unable to compete with the Amazons on a physical level, lacking their special powers, and so was given powers almost identical to those of Wonder Woman by scientist Paula Van Gunther's Purple Ray. Ah, damn Purple Ray. Returning to the outside world to join the Teen Titans, she was forced to stay behind when the other Amazons sojourn to another dimension to recharge their magical powers as shown in Wonder Woman and has been secretly living in Titan's lair as since that time. Now she takes the name Donna Troy as a civilian identity and moves into an apartment in Greenwich Village with new friend Sharon Tracy. Later she is contacted by Queen Apolita who informs her that the Amazon's use of the Purple Ray had been accidentally responsible for her recurring weak spells. A problem which she has now been corrected Wonder Girl celebrates her new life by designing a new costume and changing her hairstyle. I love the Titans are like, I know what'll cure fainting spells. Get out. <laughs> yeah, also it's so hilarious. Um Go live with a stranger. Right, and how like how does she get an apartment that easily? She doesn't how does she have money? Like <laughs> Unless it's a generous grant from the Wayne Foundation. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. I know. It's like it's like what is it, like one page. It's just like, oh, you need to, you need to find an apartment. Oh, here's an apartment. <laughs> yeah. 
They're like, not too much later, four teenagers. Dick's reading the paper, of course. And who is it? Oh, Wally, or Roy. Only if you're careful, a roommate would be good for you. Donna, yes, daddy. <laughs> and then, of course, um, Roy, take our friend Donna Troy, size eight. Yeah, right. There's no way Donna Troy is a size eight. <laughs> <laughs> Donna's like a size double zero. Get out of here. Say, not the way she drawn down. <laughs> Yeah, maybe Donna's like a size eight in children's. <laughs> oh, size like, eight, get out of my face. <laughs> so, so she is at least eighteen at this point, right? Because I'm just like, wait a minute. She's like, I mean, who knows? <laughs> otherwise, is she an accompanied minor or something? You know, it's like. I mean, she's was born, but now she's an Amazon, so she can say she's whatever age, I guess. I guess. Yeah, that's the thing, because, like, Robin's going to college, and he makes some mention in an earlier one, like, oh, I'm going to college, and I don't think Speedy and Wally are in college, so it's kind of like, is are they younger than him? Or yeah, are they just, just... at this point, I don't know, but I know, like, around the time, like, Wally first becomes the Flash, I think they say he's going to school for, uh, is it physics or something? But, yeah, that quickly gets dropped and, like, never picked back up. Yeah, it's well. It kind of seems like originally, they he might be, Rob might be a little bit older than, but I that's definitely not the case anymore. I feel like yeah, they're no. very much around um, the same age. Yeah, they're all the same age. Well, and then in some in in some versions they make Dick younger. Um, yeah, like so. Young Justice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in Titans, remember Donna says she's older, smarter, prettier. So wow. there you go. Uh, but also, I mean, I get it. It's the 60s. It's very different. I mean, even in the 80s. But can we also just appreciate how they're going out apartment hunting and all the guys are wearing suits? <laughs> yes. Roy, so cool, though. Doesn't have a tie on. Dick, of course, has the tie on. <laughs> Wally, it's a sweater with his. <laughs> uh And Roy, all like, oh, what are you doing, Sharon? Wally, talk about fast pitches, dick in his brain. Yeah, they don't call him speedy for nothing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I get what they were trying to do, you know, set up a whole new life for Donna. But it's just like, oh, hey, I know what to, hey, you've been feeling weak. I know what to cure you. Go live with a stranger. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, it is good. I mean, it is. Good. She does need a break. You can't be, you know, living. Yeah, I guess it's you know, get a life, hide out and stuff. But it's just, it's just funny. I guess it's yeah, get a life. You know, you should have your own life. But it's like, she wants to stay at the Titans' lair. Why can't she? Uh, also, Sharon is a groovy chick, and she's like, I need to make a new costume. I was getting tired of the old one, and it was getting kind of raunchy. <laughs> maybe, maybe wash it. I uh, no. I, I like how even she notices, like, I'm showing too much or whatever. Maybe she's like, like maybe I don't want Speedy to be looking at me so much. Maybe I like, shouldn't say the costume's getting kind of raunchy. Speedy's getting kind of raunchy. Maybe it's just like, man, got to hide these legs. I mean, between Speedy, Hawk, I mean, come on. Maybe she's just like, I want Robin to be the only leg one in the group. <laughs> yeah, she's jealous he has the best legs. I don't want to compete with him. Maybe, or maybe she's afraid Robin's jealous. Oh. Her legs. And Donna's such a good friend. Uh, but I do like her new costume. Oh, yeah. I actually think Donna Troy has some of the best. Well, she has some of the best costumes. It's kind of like every other one. Her first Wonder Girl costume, I mean, like, it was fine. It was okay, but it was definitely very little. It's just a, basically just like a, a young girl's version of Wonder Woman's costume. Yeah, it was a little girlish. I really like this one. Her first Troya outfit is a little too feathery and whatnot. Uh, it's a little too ancient Greece for me. But her second Troya one that's just the sparkly black outfit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's awesome. basically this outfit, except it's the black sparkly. Yeah. yeah. So basically, when she does the bodysuits, it's like yeah. top notch, Donna, looking good. 
Oh, yeah. All right. So, anything else before we close out Summer of 69 here on this show? It was good. I mean, it was good, particularly good for uh, for Donna's new costume. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the Hawk and Dove one that follows this, July, is still 12 cents. Uh, but then I think it's the Teen Titans one that comes in August. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh, no, that's October, and then it's 15 cents. So sometime between – so it's either – August, September, or October, they go up to 15 cents. Such expenses. That's right. All right. Oh, so so, what was your favorite uh, of Dick Grayson's uh, 1969 adventures that we read? I don't know. Maybe just before the ridiculous, uh, ridiculousness of it. This week's Teen Titans issues, I think, were the. Uh, Grooviest. <laughs> well, no, they they definitely were the grooviest. Exactly. <laughs> again, there uh, wasn't. Again, there wasn't a ton. Uh, I mean, the detective could back, comics backups were good, but there wasn't a ton there. And just like him with Bruce is all right, but I think at this in this at this point, he's I think he might be a little bit better with the Titans. Yeah, the thing that you didn't. Um, I read it because I was checking to see if he was in it. The one that came right before, like, Detective 393. It's the last, it's like their last weekend, because, you know, then Dick's going to go to college. Um, But it's so funny because, you know, they need a a case to solve kind of thing. So, okay, it's Dick's last weekend, but they go into Gotham and pick up an underprivileged youth to take with them on their, um, (laughs) on their Labor Day weekend to trip. So it's like, what the heck? I know, jeez. So weird. Yeah, I'd say the yeah, you're right, the Teen Titans one. It, it, I mean, it gave us something a bit more substantial, you know? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, all right, so we, should we cut it there? That sounds good. All right, so yeah, kids, next time. Yeah, Summer of 69 is officially over, but next week yeah, we'll be covering some earlier Titans issues, Teen Titans 7 and 17, and the Teen Titans animated episode, Mad Mod. So guess what the theme is next week? Mad Mod. All right, so, yes, yeah, send your thoughts. Uh, email us. Kate. Oh, we will also have the new, we should, we'll have the new issue of Nightwing next week, too, so. Yeah. So, yeah, so along with all the Teen Titans stuff, we will have Nightwing 94. So, yes, yeah, send your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find the Nightwing News on Facebook, on Twitter. Join the Nightwing Fan Group on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Everything we do is on there. Interviews every second of summer of 69. So, Smash that subscribe button. Smash it. So you don't miss anything. And most importantly, subscribe to the Patreon. Again, every little bit helps. We're not wards of a billionaire. So paying for this for ourselves. But uh, yes, 3 to $5 gets you exclusive early access to all the creator interviews, including the monthly uh, Chichester chats with Mr. DG Chichester himself. I got the good mic out for you guys. And... Of course, because Little Tell Fire Loves Man Pain. Superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. The July episode will be Halle Berry's Catwoman versus Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern with special guest uh, Hal Jordan fanboy himself, Mr. Will Allred. I, of course, love Hal Jordan. Who can hear every week on Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast, along with myself. All right, and so subscribe to the Patreon or pick yourself up some Groovy Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Shagadelic. All right, so find it all. You bet your sweet bippy we have merch. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's right, chick, we do. All right, so yeah, so find everything at Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. But you know what's timeless and never goes out of style? Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. So, (gasps) oh. 
Go to Amazon, pick it up. Okay, well, by the time you hear this on the podcast, Amazon uh, Prime Day will be over. But if you see this on YouTube, yes, go, you know, jump on I Amazon. I thought you were just going to say, what's timeless, Dick Grayson? And I was like, true. <laughs> well, that, him too. But yes, yeah, so, but also the book, Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. So yes, whether it's Prime Day or not, you should go on Amazon and pick that up. So Because reading is fundamental. <laughs> All right. All right. And again, you support a uh, educator when you do that. So, all right, cuties. Thank you for joining us for summer of 69. Again, next week we're going to, <laughs> except for the new issue and the Titans that episode, we're going to, we're going earlier than 1969. All right. We love the 60s. <laughs> Everyone go, however, other show's going forward. And we're going back. <laughs> I mean, hey, don't tempt me. I can make us go way back. Well, I was going to say, we're going to be doing those Batman 66 episodes, too, so. Well, we were already going way back. Remember, we were covering Dick Grayson stories from, like, the early 40s. Yeah, I know. Like, I can always find something from the Golden Age. Oh, I know. <laughs> always. <laughs> Remember, kids, back in the day, as Kristen has told us, uh, you know, Dick Grayson had more stories than Batman at one point. He appears on more covers. Oh, nice. All right, kids. So, yes, come back next time. We have lots for you. So, come back same wing time. Same wing channel. The Nightwing News. Peace out.